So when you're looking at the push off position or that rigid lever, you want to determine is this a high gear push off position or a low gear push off position. Now the ideal and the optimal is going to be a high gear. This is our optimal rigid lever. So you can see that my back leg is straight across those met heads. I'm moving forward in that sagittal direction across those MPJs. This is a locked, rigid, stable, powerful foot position called high gear. The low gear, which is going to be a compensation for limited first MPJ dorsiflexion, post tib tendis, tendon weakness, navicular drop, midfoot pronation, rear foot pronation, limited ankle dorsiflexion. What happens is people start to turn their foot out. And as soon as you turn your foot out and you roll around the big toe where you push off of the side of the foot, this is a low gear push off. Low gear push off is unlocked and it's unstable. I like to consider the low gear push off as an energy leak. So if you are working with athletes and you're trying to optimize power from every aspect of their body, this is often one that is overlooked and people don't realize that that's the energy leak for the athlete. We need to be optimizing that lever and that high gear position because as soon as you get into a high gear, you externally rotate that tibia and you go all the way into the power of the hips. A unlocked low gear push off, as soon as I go into this position, I'm actually internally rotating my tibia. As soon as you go internal and your hips trying to go external, you now have this disconnect where they're doing the opposite motions of each other. That does not optimize the power of the hip. It can actually lead to a lot of injury. So thinking about that push off position, assess and understand the importance of what that means. What is that last contact point that follow through when they leave the ground? We want it to be optimized from a high gear perspective.